All right, we back, we back. Boxingology Podcast, episode 18. Yes, we got the great James Tony. The great, the great James Tony. So, you got two nicknames. One, they don't talk about, okay? The Dark uh, Emperor, right? <laughs> <laughs> what? What is, what's up with that? <laughs> Crazy! I looked at it. I was like, I never heard of that one. Yeah, I never, I never heard him call you that. Yeah, but I like the James. I like lights out better. You put a lot of the people lights out. You lived up to it. You beat, you beat some of my, you beat some of my favorite fighters and so. You should have copyrighted it. You beat some of my favorite fighters of all time. You beat Evander Holyfield. You beat Tim Littles. I like I like Tim Littles a lot because I met him. He was a very nice guy, and I was always cheering for him. And that's when I first saw you fight, and I was like, "Who is this guy that just beat up Tim Littles?" <laughs> he was cheering for Tim Littles, man. <laughs> I was. You know why? Because I didn't know who you were at the time. And I saw you, and I was like... <laughs> no, but not for nothing. That was exceptional. And then you beat my other boy, Michael Nunn. I was like, wow, this this guy is amazing. You say he was easy work? Yeah, and then you beat a, a close friend of mine. So you beat a close friend of mine and I ran Barkley. <laughs> I'm actually good friends with him. You punished him. You you punished him. Yeah, that was a that was a <laughs> There was a few guys that I wish you you would have fought, and it never happened. Um, I think you beat Joe McCullen. I think you would be in the G Man. I I agree. I agree. On YouTube, they showed it on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I I would have loved to seen it like live, like on you know an actual match. Yeah, no, no, I, I believe it. I think you'd be also Julian Jackson. I know you would have beaten him too. Yeah, yeah. I would have loved to see you versus Hopkins too. Oh, another, another, another scary guy. Oh man. I- Yeah, and you know what? You guys are similar in age. You guys could do an exhibition. Still. And you still you still training. And you're still training. And he's still training. I know you're in shape. You just you fresh off training right now. Yeah, 
There's another guy I know you would have beaten, and I would have loved to seen this fight. You and Nigel Bent. Wow. Wait, where was, where was this? Where was this, James? This was in 1990. December. Before Christmas. They trying to get you locked up before Christmas, man. Ain't, <laughs> <laughs> ain't that so? <laughs> What do you think of uh, uh, that the middleweight division right now currently? I, I, this guy, this guy here, he's a Canelo fan, <laughs> and and I'll be honest with you, he talks about him all time great. I don't think Canelo beats Roy Jones. I don't think he beats you. I don't think he beats Sugar Ray Robinson. I don't think Canelo beats uh, a lot of guys. Canelo. He, he has Canelo. He likes Canelo. I don't think Canelo beats all of those guys he just named. I do like Canelo. He says Canelo beats Marvin Hagler. I think that's a tough fight. You don't think you don't think he has any skills? Don't don't go don't go crazy on him. Don't <laughs> James, I now, James, hold on. Now, I know you you a boxing guy. You don't think Canelo Alvarez has any skills? What what do you what do you think he got to do to become become one of the greats? What about Triple G? I agree. You think yep. he lost both? I think he lost both, yeah. I can see the first one. I don't know about the second one. And he lost to Lara. He lost to Lara. He lost to Lara. Thank you, yeah, he lost to Lara. And he has a chance. I know he's, I know he's a money guy. So he went with this fight with Bivol. He thinks Bivol is, is an easy walk. No, it's not. Bivol is Bivol. really, really good. He's tough. He's Olympic, tough. Olympic guy. Yeah, and he doesn't, he doesn't want to fight Benavides, and he doesn't want to fight Charlo either. I think Charlo beats him. I think Charlo, I think Charlo, beats, I think Charlo, him. Beats, him. I think people are sleeping on Bivol. I mean, on Bivol, yeah. Bivol is very, very good. He's tough. He's tough. He's, yeah. he's, he's technical. He's got good boxing skills, and he got some pop. He's sound. He's sound. Mm-hmm. What do you think of Otto Bedevi versus Canelo? Yeah, he's a tough guy. Is there, is there any fighters right now that, that you like, James? There we go. That's my number one.
I believe you. I think, I, I I agree. think so too. I agree. I think he. I think. I think there's a reason why Errol Spence is not looking to fight him. I think he's trying to avoid him. Yeah. Yeah. His his style his style doesn't match up well with, with Crawford. Crawford will pick him apart. He's too he's too sharp. And this fight and this fight right now with uh with uh um um Ugas is Ugas. not an easy fight either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a tricky fight. Where do you have Manny Pacquiao in, in the greatest of all time? I got him in the team. All right. You put Floyd in the list too? Of course. I'm going to name some other guys. I want to name some other guys that I think you're going to put there. Of course, yourself, right? So that's three. Robinson is four. Roberto Duran, right? Five. So we got five more. Uh, Muhammad Ali. Tommy Hearns. Uh, but is it Tommy Hearns because you were from Crunk too? Tommy, Tommy was incredible. We lost him. We lost the signal. Yeah, he lost. He lost connection. How do we get him back? He's got to call back. He'll call back. Give him a second. James fired up. We got him fired up already. Yeah, man. You got, we definitely got him fired <laughs> up on this. Uh, hopefully he called back, man. <laughs> let me let me text him. Keep talking to the yeah, fans. Text here. him, man. I thought we was gonna have to go back and forth on that Canelo on that Canelo thing. So he has to just call back. Yeah, tell him to just call back. He just clicked the link. He can call back. He probably he, he lost service. His phone could have died or something. Looks like somebody called him, though. Yeah. But, yeah. Probably um, Bernard Hopkins. Yeah, know what that probably, yeah he's like, you call me scary? <laughs> <laughs> that fight would be an ugly fight. On the press conference, on the real fight. <laughs> Yo, that, that would have been a trilogy. That would have been one of the... I think that would have been one of the greatest trilogies in boxing. Yeah. If those two would have fought. Yeah. Absolutely. I could see draws. I could see controversial decisions. But you know what? I, I, no I, knockouts, though. I don't see... They both uh, had chance. I don't see James losing that fight at all. Because James had tremendous skills, hand skills. He had very good power. Mm -hmm. You know, he had good defense with the shoulder roll. And Hopkins, as good as he is... Sneaky counters. It, yeah, sneaky counters. I just don't think on the volume, he beats Tony. Yeah, he would have, he'd, have to, he'd have to be real smart in that fight. He he would be tying him up a lot. I know. Yeah, but um, he was good at getting tied up. He was good at throwing those those uppercuts. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Champ. He's back. He's back. For for a second, we thought that Bernard Hopkins called you. That's why the phone. <laughs> 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 oh, really? Yeah, yeah, we thought. We, we thought. <laughs> well, you know what? I was just telling him now uh, for a few seconds. I said that if that fight would have taken place, uh, the way you guys are, the pre-fight would have been amazing. The fight would have been amazing. That fight would have probably went three fights. It would have went, I think so. A trilogy. No. No, no, no. One fight. Well, I don't think you would have lost, but I, I'm, I'm just saying you would have won all three, but I think it would have won a trilogy. You know what that that first fight with Sam Peter? I thought you won that fight. I did too. Yeah, I did too. I did too. He just came back. Uh, one of his promoters or something last year uh, reached out to me. He was gonna. He, they were looking to fight him because I I own a gym over here in New York, a boxing gym, and they were asking against all the trainers or all the promoters, whatever, um, if they had a fight for Sam Peter to fight it in Atlantic City. Uh, but they wanted someone with like a ton of losses, and they were gonna pay him five thousand dollars. Yeah. Hey, you 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 ruined uh, my boy Ram Barkley. Never yeah, forget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ruined him. I ruined him. Who pissed me off? That's what happens. 
What do you What do you think your toughest fight was, James? Mm. And that was that was a fight of a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we, we, you know what? It, it basically my fault was well, it being it my fault by looking at my training bill and being bill and he the train mic. You know, they told me stay on the phone with all the fans. I was there at that I was there. I wouldn't have lied to you. I was there in my day, man. So I was there in my day, man. I was there in my Let's talk about Bill Miller. He was he trained uh, as a Charles. He trained. He, ever. Yeah, he trained. Ever. He trained as a Charles, and he he taught you with the shoulder roll. Yeah. Yeah, he um, Charles trained um, he trained with Robinson a little bit. He trained Archie Moore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He trained Tommy Hearns. Most of my career, and he even he even trained. He made a story. Yeah, and the and the amateurs. Yeah. 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 He's a very, very. A lot of people don't talk about him. You yeah. want, you want to. I, I think this is the perfect time to talk about him. He's a very slip on trainer, man. It was on as on as on Dundee and Eddie Fight. Yeah, it was great. But my man was great, 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 How was he as a as a coach? Was he like a rough guy? Was he good at teaching that and making it happen? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're definitely gonna have to do a show on trainers too, and actually yeah, yeah. put him on that list as well. Yeah, a lot of the unsung, unsung guys in uh, on, on, boxing. On the Archie, on the not Archie Moore, on uh, Andrew Dundee, I had the chance when I was a young guy and I was an amateur, uh, work with Andrew Dundee, and honestly, I was so excited and enthusiastic because this guy worked with Leonard and and uh, Muhammad Ali and a whole bunch of other guys he had world title champions with. But I didn't get anything out of him. I really didn't get anything out of him. I felt like I didn't learn anything. Yeah, yeah. He used to come in for the fights, you know. I had a I had a few weeks. Was he an assistant? Was he? Was he an assistant coach with uh, Emmanuel Stewart, or they were both? I remember going to Crunk Gym once, and that was hot. It was hot in there. <laughs> yeah. Can't cook with cold yeah. grease. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and he put the heater on too. You can't cook with cold grease, baby. He put the heater on too. <laughs> Emmanuel Stewart, I had a chance for a few weeks with him, and uh, you know, such a nice guy. I learned a lot about him. He gave me an opportunity. He said, uh, "Come live with me over here in Detroit. I'll help you become a tremendous fighter." 
And that was my biggest regret. Off Roseville. Huh? It's off Roseville. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm from New York, so I don't remember the area where he lived, but he wanted me to move out there for a short period of time just to acclimate, and he was going to train me and, you know, change my style and everything and help me. You know, I was a, a banter, or not a banter, a featherweight. And so, you know, I... I was scared to make that that move mainly because I had my mom. There was nobody here to take care of her, and I was just I wasn't ready, man. I don't think I was ready, but I do regret it. If I had ever to go back in time, I would take that chance. But the two weeks that I did spend with him, the two weeks that I did spend with him, I learned a lot, a lot with him. I mean, he taught me. He even taught me how to hold the pads. Now I do a lot of pad work with you know the kids and stuff, but he showed me how to hold the pads. One of the things he told me is don't do what these guys are doing now, just sitting there and throwing, throwing, throwing. He says, I want you to move around with them, with the pads. Exactly. Exactly. Hey, that's old school. Yeah. That's an old school way. Old school. Everybody you want to forget. Old school is always going to be the best. Yeah. Because you're going to learn something from it. You're going to learn something from it. Yeah. You're going to learn something from it. Because 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 you're going to learn something Jake Lamara, what did you think of him? Oh God, I loved it. Tough, hey, tough as nails. Yeah. Hey, that's how these fighters should be today. Not not. What? What do, you, what do you think is missing? Like, why do you think guys? So you're saying the guys are softer today? Like, what do you think they missing? What do you think? Do you think you think it's the gyms now? You think it's the gyms, the trainers now? What, what do you think it is? Yeah. Yeah. So what you gonna teach them, right? Are you planning to be a trainer, James? No, there's no kid out there that you might say, "Wow, this kid has some talent." Let me, because I see, I see, I see you a lot of times that uh, you're teaching people stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I train. I train. I train celebrity clients. I train um, doctors, lawyers, whatever. I'll do that. But for the most part, I'm not training the kids. They 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 know the damn thing. They they know. I mean, I I'm 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 not gonna put them the bullshit. Yeah. Do you, are you are you thinking again in any exhibitions? You had ninety. You had ninety fights, ninety fights, and you never been stopped. You're you you want you 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 I don't won. believe in that. And like you know that. what? And everybody talks about Floyd May with a shoulder roll. Your shoulder roll was a lot more technical because you rolled and you kept slipping with it. I do it a I'm gonna put you like this. I do it the right way. You look at Ray Robinson, Ellen Charles. You see a no difference. You step into your shots. You 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 ride back. You step in. Show it up. You know what I'm saying? He uh, but you know, I I'm not dogging. He did a good job with his. But hey, mine's. Well, I'm going to come back with some. I'm trying to knock your head off. He's trying to run him out of there. And people forget you were a very good counter puncher, too. Yeah, sneaky counters. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Now, there's a fight that I saw that was fight of the year. And I, uh, man, I think it was either the late 90s or early 2000s. Cruiserweight, Vasily Jeveroff. That was a hell of a fight. That was the old three. Um, that was July. If it's in, if it's in July, yeah, that was. Hey, hey, I had fun that night. It was great. It was war. Will you say that's one of the greatest fights you had? But you know what? <laughs> but you know what? And his career was never the same after mm-hmm. that. 
He ruined. He ruined him. His career was not. That guy was never around. No, I never. I never heard of him after that. His career was over. (laughs) So there's another fight that I thought was a bullshit fight because I still consider you as a heavyweight champion. When you fought uh, John Ruiz. Yeah, Ruiz, yeah. And I actually, I get along with John Ruiz, and I actually, every so often when I talk to him, I mention that. I say, you know, John, I know you hate to, to hear this, but James really beat you. They gave him the victory, but it was a bullshit that the way they took it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I believe it was for, te- um, you had uh, low levels of testosterone or something. Such a bullshit fight. I even told John, will you ever will you have ever given him a rematch? He goes, No, I'm not. <laughs> I was like, Why? Why wouldn't you have given him a rematch? I mean he really technically beat you and he just never responded on that. I beat, I, I beat John Reed with one arm. He did say that you hit him harder than Roy Jones. Yeah. Yeah. You know what was crazy is that he gave a rematch to Bernard Hopkins. Yeah. And he was. He beat Hopkins. And he, no, he he won the first fight. Yeah. The second fight he lost. But I'm like, okay, if he fought Hopkins, he should give James Tony a rematch. Yeah. They fought two times. Two times they fought. No, I think it was... Was it three? No, H- Hopkins and Roy Jones fought twice. Yes, 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 twice. Only fought twice. Twice. He fought, he fought Tarver three times. Yes, Tarver three. Yeah. Tarver. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tarver and you, that would have been a good fight too, but I, I don't think Tarver would have dealt with your inside fighting. And you know, Hopkins used to crouch down. And that's what I was—that's what I was telling that year too. When when the phone disconnected, that his style—he didn't throw enough. He didn't throw a lot. He liked to hit and hold, hit and hold. And if if he would have grabbed you, you had that sneaky uppercut. Yeah. He would have landed that uppercut all day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember when he got KO'd by Joe Smith and he said he got pushed out of the ring. Yep. Yeah, you came from middleweight and you went up to fighting massive heavyweights. Uh, so what, uh, 
Yeah, yeah. What you? What do you think your best weight was? Two hundred seventeen pounds. Mm. Holyfield. That's a good Did you feel bad when when you beat Holyfield? Did you feel bad when you beat Holyfield? You know what I want to ask you? And you're you're legendary for sparring. Legendary. Yep. Like, I don't know anybody that sparred more than you. Like, that's your thing. But why, why, uh, you didn't like, did you like running? Did you still run eight miles when you were a heavyweight? No, I, 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 I ran four miles. Okay. And sprint, and sprint on the treadmill. Four fast sprints. Are you, you still sparring now? Huh? You still do any sparring now? I wish I could. I mean, we'll be so damn scared. <laughs> look, look, But that's the way it's supposed to be. You know why? Yeah. It's, it's boxing, it's you, man. It's you and me. It's you and me. It's, it's, there's no, there's no like work. You know, everybody says, "Oh, I, I got coaches that come from other gyms to spar my guys," and they go, "We're gonna go light today." And I tell them, "Listen, they say that, and somebody gets clocked, they're gonna hit you hard." Yep. You know that's how it is. Yeah, you got to spar hard. <laughs> so, hey, look, you got ice bikes, 15, five, five minute rounds. Every day, it's Monday to Saturday. Same, same, same with my only off. But you didn't make to the weights. I still work out. Now, on the weights, you said you lift weights. Did you lift for heavy or did you lift for a lot of reps? Heavy. Because you forget, when I played football, I was, I was a DB. And quarterback, so I had to, you know, I had to stay strong, man. Yeah. As long as uh, that's all, hey, I'm doing, I'm doing all I know. All, all I've been taught. No boy. That didn't tighten up your muscles, your shoulders up? No, but I got massage, actually. But I got massage in the morning, and massage in the night. Nice. Nice. Did you do any swimming? No, man. I, I can swim, but, man, anybody can be like, I'm not a Rocky Balboa. <laughs> 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 so, what was, like, uh, like you're, you're training for a fight back then. What was your normal eating habit? Like, did you eat five times a day? Did you eat three times a day? H- how was it? Lettuce and water? Yes. And sometimes a little, a little, a little, a little treat here and there. That's why you were so angry in the fight. <laughs> yeah. Same thing with super weight. Same thing with a lot of weight. While I was cruising weight, things open, open up a little more. I'm back to, I'm not minding. My 
came back boxing, before I came back to boxing, I was two to a two and five pound piece in the back. I'm just being big. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Now, you know, uh, when I became a heavyweight in the cruiserweight, now my body felt back normal, almost. So, was that breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or did you switch it up? Okay, and and then the you said the treat. What would be the treat? What would be your choice of treat? Any fucking thing I want. Was it just a meal or the whole day? I know what that means. I know. <laughs> hey, Jay, I know what that means. <laughs> Burger, Burger King. Champ, I was going to ask you about your amateur record. You had 35 amateur fights. You were 33 and 2. And don't, don't tell me the knockouts. 33 and 2. And 31 knockouts? 29 knockouts. Okay. He was right there. All right. Why didn't you uh, pursue more amateur, like to go to the Olympics or? Man, as a fourth the house, I don't know if you ever heard of the Ohio State Fair. Oh, yeah, that was big. Oh, was good, yeah. Yeah. Well, then I fought in Germany in 80, August of 88. Uh, I, won, I won the first two fights, but I am. Uh, third fight, I fought on the field. I still remember his name to this day. And then a video sleep. I dropped him five times. Dropped him. I lost. <laughs> and the reason why is because I didn't throw no punches. Because, you know, amateurs, you throw all the punches, but at the end of the day, I ain't throwing no punches. I can't believe they didn't stop that fight. Yeah. Feel that? Any any regrets in boxing? And I believe that if you would have had a rematch, that fight should have been three fights automatic, because no, if. I, I, They don't want, yeah, they don't want it again. You you never had a trilogy, that's the thing too, you know? Yeah. I, I have one trilogy, that's what my McCown. Yeah. That was three fights or two? That was, yeah. That was three. I, I had a new way twice, and the last time I fought before I was a Cruiserweight, for the Cruiserweight Championship in um, 1994. Now he's a trainer at Mayweather's gym. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, Sam Sam Peter yeah. ran it back with you. Uh, Sam you Pete, yeah, he ran it back. Yeah, he ran it back with you, motherfucker. He won he won he won number three. Here here's a here's a <laughs> here here's an exhibition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's an exhibition. Here's an exhibition. Cause I'm gonna see Shannon Briggs in a few uh in Ooh. May. I know. He's getting inducted. He's getting inducted in the New York City Hall of Fame in May. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. No. <laughs> that, that's what I'm D block, baby. Let's go. That, that's what I'm saying. He He's. He's under. He's under. He never really made it as a heavyweight, really. But that would be that be that would be an interesting exhibition, though. Not you really. Right now, it not. We gonna find. We gonna find you a fight. And and you know what, champ? He fought one guy. 
that was quality. That was George Foreman, and he really lost that fight. Yeah, he struggled through that one. <laughs> oh man! It was Shannon Briggs? <laughs> Shannon Briggs. <laughs> oh Chan- man! Talking about the Klitschko's. Now that they're question, champ. Question. Um. When you say Klitschko, so the Klitschko's now are at a war, and uh, with, with Russia, and um, Lomachenko joined. So did uh, Usyk. Uh, Usyk. Yeah, you think? And I give a lot of credit to these guys. They they they, they literally drop big money just to defend their country. Um, you think there's American fighters now, right now, that would actually do that for for us? <laughs> it's tough, man. Everybody's a social media warrior. So, do you give these guys credit for fighting for their country? Do you give credit to uh, Lamacheco? Yeah, I was I was telling that to him. I was like, "How many? I wonder That's... if Deontay Wilder will do that." <laughs> Come on, man. Chan, <laughs> what you what you got going on right now? Anything anything we need to look out for? Man, you got everything. You got to come down to the gym, man. You got to come down to New York. We're in Mount Vernon, like right next to the Bronx. We're money, money earning Mount Vernon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're, you're always welcome over here. Yeah, no, listen. And they have the best jerk chicken over here. Oh, shit. Yep. Yeah. You come down here, we take you out to hook, eat. We're going to hook you up. We take, so, we got a few more minutes, uh, champ. So, uh, who, who besides Robinson, anybody else you looked up to in boxing? Yeah, but he was in the same gym as you. I mean, these these, these are guys that were with you. He was amazing. Salvador was a bad man. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of people say Chavez, but Chavez technically had a he he had a loss. Yeah, Chavez, a lot of people don't know this, had an actual loss early in his career and they reversed it. Yep. Um Yeah, he was amazing. He fought Osuma Nelson, mm-hmm. Bazooka Gomez. He fought everybody. And he was ready to fight before he died in that Porsche. He was ready to sign a deal to fight Alexis Aguayo. Aguayo, yep. That was amazing. What do you think of Rocky Rocky Marciano? Yeah. Yeah. 
They didn't. A lot of people. A lot of people back then. A lot of white people didn't consider him a champion. They they didn't like that he beat Joe Lewis. When you beat Joe Lewis, you already had a taint. He's an old, old man, yeah. yeah. Different story. Yeah. yeah. Well, Rocky said it too. Rocky said, I would have never beaten you in your prime. No, it would have been a different you know? story. But Joe returned the favor and said it would have been a hell of a fight. Um, There's a video on YouTube of Muhammad Ali talking about Rocky Marciano because they did a computer uh, fight scene, I think a sparring session, and Marciano was an old man. And Ali said, and he was very honest about it to Howard Cassell, uh, he's, that was a reporter back then. He said that Rocky hit harder than Foreman and Sonny Liston. And that was an old man. Yeah. Well, champ, we definitely thank you for the time. I know that uh, yes, we extended this past the 45, so I appreciate <laughs> it. Um, I'm definitely going to buy a cigar. Absolutely. W me too. Where's this website? Yeah, send it to us. Text it to me because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the website, and what I'll do is I'm going to screenshot the website and post it on my page. There's a ton of people in this gym that smoke cigars. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to get it, I'm gonna, and I'm going to tag you. Yeah, we'll try to put it on the podcast too. I appreciate you, James. You're, you're to me, in the top, top five greatest all-around fighters of all time. Yes. Yes, sir. And yes, I'm gonna sir. and I'm gonna make a shirt. I'm gonna make a shirt and I'm gonna send it to you. You're gonna like it too. <laughs> You're gonna like it. It's a surprise. <laughs> Thank you, James. I right, champ. Yes, sir.